So today we're going to talk about the Depth API. It's a very useful API that has been introduced in more recent Chrome versions. It's only currently available on Chrome. And what it does is it gives you a mapping from where your phone position is to the depth of the image in front of you. And it does this through motion. So as you move your phone around, it'll compare the different images and it will give you a depth image for the final image. And after a certain calibration time, it'll just be able to give you depth information without any extra information. And so this works with a singular camera, which is different from a lot of other modern techniques that use LiDAR and other sorts of tools. So this can be used on phones that don't have LiDAR and are a little bit older. It does have the limitations of it's not being as accurate as LiDAR, but it is interesting in that you can get a single image and get depth from it, which is something that in the past has kind of seemed really inconceivable. But through the magic of math, it can work out. So it's a really exciting API. Okay, so I wanted to start by talking about occlusion. So within AR, occlusion is when a 3D object from your 3D scene appears to be behind a real world object. And so this is a little bit difficult to do because your 3D is actually rendered after your real world image. So you have a real world image and then you render the 3D on top of that. But how we can get around this is we can build out a shader that will compare our depth map to our 3D depth map. And if something is higher in the real world map, the real world 3D map, then we can end up removing that section in a fragment shader, and that will make it appear like it's behind the object. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at two different depth maps, the depth map from our 3D scene and the depth map from the real world. We're laying those two atop, on top of each other, and if anything is on top in the real world, we will cut that out in the 3D scene. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. We are including the depth information in the shader, so you can see the coloration on the cube, and that is information from the depth center. This can be removed if you're not interested in kind of doing troubleshooting. Uh, so some of the issues that come up with this particular methodology is that you end up with really jittery occlusion. And so that can either be smoothed out digitally, or you could use a uh, meshing where you capture a mesh and then you occlude with that mesh. And so we might look at that in a bit, but today we're just gonna focus on using fragment shaders. So because it's based on motion, the depth API is really not good at stationary objects. So if you have your phone and it is staying in one motion, it will will do a very poor job. So you have to think a little bit about where you want to use it. The other thing that comes up is that it's not necessarily the best at capturing objects in motion. So you need to have a situation where your object is in motion, your cell phone is in motion, but surrounding objects are not in significant motion because that will mess up some of the other parts of AR. So it's kind of a little bit of a balancing act and there's only, a, there is some limitations how you can use so I also wanted to note that while in landscape mode, it actually doesn't work so well. So there are certain conversions that we haven't done that WebXR seems to kind of imply is true. So I'm not, I haven't actually dealt into it in any sort of depth, but either the depth API or the viewport API don't just automatically flip as soon as you change the landscape mode of your phone. And so you need to do some extra, well, we, in order to convert this into something that would work for landscape mode, you'd have to do a little bit of extra work. Um, you can start it in portrait mode and then turn it to landscape mode. And since all the parameters carry over, it is equivalent in that fashion, but you can't start it in escape. Okay, so let's get started with the code. So we're gonna frame this as starting with the depth information. And then afterwards, we will build all the rest of the code around this. So this is captured every single frame. So basically we get the frame, we get the depth information from the frame by giving it the view. And then if we have that information, we'll execute the next code. And so basically what this code is giving is a lot of information to the uniforms of the shader material. And so this is basically allowing the shaders to access this information. And so first of all, we have to give it the raw meter information. Information. We also have to get some information about the viewport. So it's depth and width. And then finally, we have to add all of this into a texture. And so the texture is basically going to be a 2D image and it will have luminosity and an alpha channel. And that we will add as a data texture and we will unbind it using 8 bit array. And so this data texture is the one thing that's probably going to be a little bit confusing and is took me quite a bit of time to figure out, honestly. So this is kind of the thing that if you're adding it to 3GS, you will need to pay a lot of attention to that section. Next thing is that you'll want to change the filtering. So by default, data textures filter to the nearest neighbor, but we actually want it to filter with a linear filter so that it, so that it filters that way. And we're going to add in the boilerplate code around the XR frame. And so we're going to be using this quite a bit every time uh, AR frame gets called, this stuff all functions. So we have to have our render function in here. We have a pose. A pose is basically the location of our camera. We'll get a view from that location. 
information. And then we uh, get some information from the view that we need as well. And then we're just going to add in the rest of our boilerplate. And this is all very common stuff that we've been using quite a bit before. So it's just uh, we'll have uh, basically everything's very similar. The two differences is that we are changing the required features. So we are adding depth sensing and then we're adding some options to the depth sensing. So we're using the CPU optimized and the luminous alpha channel. Uh, and then we just have to request that when our session gets started to start up loop. So once we get that started, it'll start looping over. And that's pretty much most of it. We just have to initialize some things. Oh, yes. Also the shader. So uh, basically, we're going to be adding a cube and we will have to have a custom shader. And so the uniforms are important. These are what are going to we are going to have give to the shader programs. And then we also are going to need to add some custom shaders to our HTML document that we will retrieve here. So that's going to get us on to the next part of the coding stuff. But this is relatively straightforward where it's just adding an inbox with these shaders. OK, so now on to the shaders. Shaders are a little bit complicated. They run on the GPU, so they are very small programs that run on GPUs. And we, you have to set them up in such a way that they don't have a lot of global information. They just have a lot of local information so that you can run them in parallel. All of them should be able to be run in parallel. They have some memory associated with them that you have to define beforehand. How these pipelines tend to work is there's a bunch of things that 3JS does. And then these are the mini shaders that we use afterwards. So these are not the complete shaders. These are just sections of the shaders. There's a vertex shader, which has to do with the points of our geometry. And then there's a fragment shader, which has to do with the color of our end result. And so starting with the vertex shader, it's a pretty standard shader. The only thing that we need to grab from it is we need to grab the position information because they're scoped a little bit differently. You kind of need to make sure that the distance information is accessible to the fragment shader. So and then it's also important to realize what type of depth information we are using. First of all, we have the position in our raw coordinates, then we have our model view. So that is essentially from the position of our camera, but it's not yet having the projection of our camera. So this is pre projection mapping, we will grab that depth information. And that will be our Z position that we will be moving forward. So yeah, notice that it is the model view position. And then we'll move on to the fragment shader. So the fragment shader, we have to change our fragment coordinate to a coordinate in our map. So that involves making mapping it so that it is a smaller distance. And then and also flipping it around. So it will it's initially mapped in not the same way as our images. And so we're just going to flip that around. Now we're going to gather the information from our texture. So our texture is loaded into the GPU. This is going to get that coordinate information from the GPU and it's going to unpack that value. And that value we are going to then dot product with the vector. This will convert it into the right value that we can multiply it by our raw value in meters. And this will give us our depth in meters. So now we have a depth in meters in our from our depth information. And then we also have one from our GPU information. And basically, it's just comparing to make sure that the depth information from our GPU is behind our real world, and then it will activate this alpha. And if it is not, then it won't activate the alpha. And that's basically the core part of if something is behind in the GPU version of the world where the digital image is behind the real world object, then it'll activate this function. And if it is not, then it will end up front. And so there won't be any alpha. And then we're just going to give the fragment color. So this is the pixel color, its value. And so it's basically going to be a four vector and the alpha channel is the channel that we are going to either remove or show the object. And then the other channels regularly, you would just do the normal texture color of the object, but we're just going to add in this information so that it's easier to see whether we can see an ob how near an object is to fulfilling the condition. So this will give us about a meter window to see whether our depth API is working according to plan. So you might want to remove this if you are planning on using occlusion without any sort of coloration. This is the section that you would probably change.